Okay, hi friends, this is Megan from Art Garden Oracle, and I am here late in the game to talk about my most important decks of 2023. I'm going to try and do just oracles and tarot together because some of these were just like decks um, that I use together most of the year. But this is, I've spoken of them quite often in my earlier decks from this year. So this is the Tarot of the Holy Spectrum um, by, holy crap, dude, who I will have to look up on the inside because I've forgotten. And then Dirt Gems Oracle by Louise Burdett and Chelsea Granger. And Louise, sorry. Um, this Chase Voorhees is Tarot of the Holy Spectrum. Um, this comes in lots of different versions. There's like brighter versions and yeah, but they're all pretty colorful. Even this, um, I think this is the original version. Even this dark version, I think, is colorful. Um, so, yeah, I was really into just, like, black background decks all year. Um, I, it was, like, 2023 was, like, my black background and photography deck year <laughs> for whatever reason. Uh, and you'll see that represented in the selection, although not as heavy as, like, what it actually felt like it was. Um, and when it came down to decks that I actually used a ton of, there's a little bit of variation. It's reminding me there's a deck I need to pull out that I kind of forgot about. Um, so this combo was really like a spring kind of scene for me. I just used it like crazy um, and really, really enjoyed it. I can't find Oh, here it is. Okay, sorry. Had to get that one extra deck out. Um, I honestly used this deck more than plant gems so I often use them together but more often I would say I used Tarot of the Holy Spectrum just by itself. Um, this deck does not come with a guidebook on purpose it's very intentional um, and it really was a beautiful experience in me trusting myself to read intuitively um, and there are several kind of cards in here that take a really different interpretation um, to the RWS kind of traditional meanings and even with that like that was I think part of what was helping me to really trust myself was like I really could read intuitively and comfortably even with cards that had a different feeling than the RWS cards that I kind of had memorized um hopefully this isn't this is kind of glaring again sorry I'll work on my lighting situation 2024 goals <laughs> um, last year I was like trying to figure out editing software and filming technique and all that kind of stuff which by no means have I mastered anyway um so yeah I just I love this deck I feel like I will I feel right now January 2024 after owning this deck for a year I feel like this is one of my forever decks I can't imagine finding a replacement um but yeah just love these together the mostly they aesthetically look great together but um they read really really well together too and dirt gems has an amazing guidebook i really love dirt gems guidebook so much um i believe dirt, dirt gems just came out mass market too i think i've seen a few reviews of that so far um so cool little tidbit that this is mass market now this is indie um, and I got, they did a huge sale on Dirt Gems right before kind of getting rid of the indie decks before it went mass market. So I got that in one of those big sales. Um, but yeah, these just read so well together. And I know a fair bit about herbs. I'm, um, I grow my own herbs. I have been into medicinal um, herbalism for a very long time. So I can read this one for the most part intuitively. But um, even knowing herbs really well, that's what I would say about this deck. There's some people who are like, I don't need an herb deck. I know herbs. This one I feel like has um, a lot of good information that just like a traditional herbalist kind of background. I feel like the guidebook and the deck can still bring something a little extra. So I appreciate it for that purpose. But um, yeah, these guys just, I loved it. I read with both of them. I read with this one more for other people without Dirt Gems just because um, I hadn't used Dirt Gems as heavily. And so I still 
again, sometimes that's the other beauty of this is like sometimes when a, a deck comes with a guidebook, you feel yourself like depending on it for some reason more so with oracles for me. I don't feel like there's too many tarot guidebooks I depend on, but um, so yeah, it can kind of be, um, you know, like freeing to not have a guidebook, but whatever. I'll always love a guidebook no matter what, <laughs> even though I know that intellectually I might kind of fly a little bit better without one. Um, so anyway, yeah, great reader for other people too. I found it just works really well. And people really, really liked my readings with Tarot of the Holy Spectrum. Um, and like liked the deck. And so anyway, big favorite all year long, but really, really used it a lot in the spring and into the summer a bit. So Tarot of the Holy Spectrum and Dirt Gems. Um, the other one that was kind of like, uh more so a big deck in the spring and summer actually some in the winter too um because i got it about this time last winter was the flow tarot okay so her name's rachel torta um and th this guidebook isn't huge it just like doesn't fit in the bag so i use the heck out of this um late like winter into spring and summer and then i I've come back to it several times just over the year. And even though it's a water deck and has this kind of very beachy back to it, um, the, is it the cloud suit is cups? No, it's the sword suit has, which is snow, has a lot of like winter. There's a lot of winter imagery in here too and plenty of fall and other season imagery. So this um, sometimes I'll think of it as like a summer or spring deck, but it's very much your own. Um, so yeah, I use this in the fall again after kind of taking a break from it in the late summer. And then why I came back to it in the fall too was that I got this deck, which are the um, Earth Blessings Oracle Cards by Liz Dean. I found these through um, Meg's channel. Uh, oh my gosh. Some, so many people are changing their channels this year that I she hasn't changed her. So Rose Honey Ritual. Um, and she talked about, uh, kind of early pregnancy, kind of being sick over the summer and that she really needed some kind of clean, gentle, not gentle, but, um, simple kind of more peaceful decks to work with. And I have been, I had been looking for a match, kind of an Oracle to work with this deck for a while. And, um, I almost got that. It's like an affirmation deck, Sea Journeys or something like that. It's a mass market. This one's, sorry, this guy is um, indie. This is mass market. So I was going to get that. I think it's Sea Journeys or Sea Blessings or something like that. But it's a very water-based photo affirmation deck on Amazon. And I kept kind of coming back to it. I was like, no, I don't need um, an Oracle deck by any means to work with flow. But when Meg showed this one on her channel, I was just like, I love, and I still do, I love this deck. It's so great. It has um, backs from the four different seasons. So it's got like an autumn, spring, winter, and oh, summer. Um, and the keywords are great. The uh, little phrase is great. And then the book that it comes with, the book is simple. Um, it's a little, you know, a little more than a little white book, a little less than like, a full guidebook, um, but the info in it is just really, really good, and it's very grounded. You know, sometimes like affirmations bother me a little bit, especially if someone makes them a little too, you know, power of attraction type affirmations. I get grumpy with those, um, but these they keep the affirmations to the book, which I find helpful. Um, but it's just a very grounded oracle, which is what I wanted. Some of the affirmations in the other deck weren't my favorite. So, I mean, yeah, just like, looking, I don't know, just the pairing. There's so much you can get from it. Like nine of swords overwhelmed with choices. May you see the opportunities. And so much of my year um, was about choices and how much I overcommit and overdo uh, and overwhelm myself and contribute more to my illness. <laughs> by 
not being able to put boundaries around things. Um, it's a beautiful, a beautiful combo. I really enjoyed it and used it a lot. So I, I got this Oracle deck in the fall or late summer and started pulling flow out again because I really like working with them together. Um, and I just mixed up all those tarot and oracle cards <laughs> as I was talking. So yeah, love these, love these two. This year, flow is definitely like an all year kind of deck. And the Earth Blessings Oracle cards by Liz Dean was an end of the year find. Thanks to Meg. Um another summer deck that I really enjoyed that felt I mean, again, I feel like I could use this deck any time of the year. But I got it in the summer and really enjoyed it throughout the summer is the Nettles uh, Mountain Dream Tarot. And I got this, I, I think I saw it reviewed on Catamancy Donaghy's channel. Um, and she paired it with Runners of Sun, which I have. But honestly, I didn't use the two of them together that often i mean she paired it in like one video i'm not saying that's like a recommendation or anything but, but i got excited about it um initially to pair with runners of the sun and then i really just used it by itself mostly um and it is it was the first photographic deck it was made in the 70s um and b nettles has recently i think there were some i can't remember if there were some updates to this one but she's and i haven't checked re recently at all but Pretty sure it's still in print. And like I said, it was just like this year of photographic decks for whatever reason. Um, you know, the Flow Tarot is just this like very perfect kind of picture <laughs> deck. I would imagine most of them are stock or not stock photos, but public domain photos. Um, this one I love because it's starting to get into just like more of my photographic taste this year was like really interesting photography not like picture perfect photography like the photo is and this was part of that i love that just the vintage vibe of these pictures i know she's updated a few of them i can't remember there were a few cards that she added her kids into later on in life but yeah i just love these quirky homemade images um I don't know. Yeah, just like a bunch of happy hippies reenacting the tarot. <laughs> and I like it along with her kind of cool um, photography effects. And like knowing just how hard these kind of photography effects were with early film. Hey, buddy. That is my kitty, my talkative kitty cat page. Hi. Hello. I see you. I'm going to provide some background music. Anyway, lovely, lovely deck. Um, really sweet readings. Um, I found that, yeah, I didn't think I could like read very intuitively just from kind of vintage photos uh, that were kind of really literal, for the most part, literal copies of the RWS imagery. But I totally could. Again, this one doesn't come with a guidebook. I don't think I'm lying about that. Um, but yeah, I felt like these spoke to me quite well. And I could really get, get good readings from it without a guidebook. No problem. And honestly, without like, I mean, all of them pretty directly bring to mind the RWS card because it's kind of like this pseudo clone. but. Um, any of them that did deviate at all, I really didn't have trouble pulling just in. I didn't have to, what am I trying to say? I didn't have to like remember the card, <laughs> the RWS card in order to get info. I was able to read really well um, from the deck just as it is. Okay. So that is the Mountain Dream Tarot again by B Nettles. I can't remember if I showed that. And that's, yeah, mostly representative of my, like, pretty intense photographic deck year. Um, one that is a standby. This has been 
in my top decks ever since I got it um, and has been a more recent kind of tarot tarot journey of mine. I, I don't really work with reversals, but everything's like mixed up for some reason. Um, I just use this to do my, um, I use these for my overarching kind of year ahead reading. And it was really good. I'm really excited. Um, I might share more about that later. But this is Mary L. Tarot, uh, second edition. Was there a third edition? The edition where she made the Hierophant and um, one other card, I can't remember, more palatable, I guess. But I like the old, I like the initial cards just as much as I like the ones she replaced them with. Um, hi, sweetheart. Sorry. I don't know what you need, bud. Shh, shh, shh. I really don't want to edit, so try and be quiet. Um, okay. And this is just this old deck. I've said it before. Uh, the artwork I find to be so beautiful. It can be a, a lot for some people, which I totally get. Um, it's not for me. There's not too much imagery that uh, it's difficult for me. And I've worked with a lot of different kinds of decks. Um, so yeah, this doesn't freak me out or, or challenge me too much. God, please. Can you please get off the computer, buddy? Come on. Come on. You can come sit in my lap if you want. Uh, so anyway, this continues to be like my top deck. What, um, was different kind of this year and what were other big Oracle decks with this is um when i first got this deck i don't need an oracle deck at all to work with it sorry i'm gonna try to get him to do something different <laughs> hey relax relax buddy uh you want to say hi oh. <laughs> i don't know if that worked at all see now i'm gonna totally have to edit this like crazy sorry for the sorry for the big movement um so I didn't need to work with an Oracle deck at all because the guidebook to this, any of you that have it or have seen it, is so deep and intense. And so, like, you know, this isn't an experience where I just, like, read it RWS style. Like, it has so many of its own. It's got, you know, kind of the energetic meaning correlation to RWS, but then so much of its own energy and research and correlation with the Tree of Life. and um, and all different kinds of myths and spiritual teachings. Uh, so I never needed an Oracle deck, but I do, I was just kind of, it was like low level something I was thinking about or like kind of keeping an eye out for. And so these are um, Susan Sinobele's two Oracle decks. She might have more. This one is the Goddesses Oracle. Um, and this one is the animal message. Sorry, I think it's the goddess message and the animal message. I will put down below what their real names are because the books are kind of far away. I just, I combine them together in this little pouch I made. So anyway, um, I use these together a lot and I really, really loved them. They worked really well together. And um, it was fun now that I know her deck a little bit better to use these alongside. My apologies. And the glare is probably bad because these guys, these are mass market. Um, I want to say they're like $12 a pop. Hopefully they're still available. They seemed like they were maybe getting a little um, harder to find when I got them. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> oh, as I got to know the uh, Mary L. Tarot more, it was fun to pull in these. Um, oracle cards. So the goddess oracle cards and the animal oracle cards both have, they don't have a guidebook, they just have the info right on the back, which is lovely. Um, and yeah, they read so beautifully together. Um, and a lot of times, even though I do know a lot of these cards a lot better now, I would still go back to the Mary L guidebook um, and read her descriptions because I would find so much of the information and symbolism in Sinobolese. Boulay's cards would show up in like really wild 
um, sorry, I should have said <laughs> graphic nudity <laughs> warning. I just realized. Um, but yeah, a lot of the information would pull up in really amazing ways when I would go back to the Marielle guidebook. The other really great pairing that um, was a big uh, thing this year was um, the Earthbound Oracle I got mid-year. And um, this is by Skull Garden, uh, A.L. Swartz. I uh, found them on Etsy, same person that did the Wooden Tarot. And they have another Oracle deck I can't remember the name of. Um, but I started pairing these with Mary L. And honestly, I'll often use Mary L with the Earthbound Oracle with the Sedan Boulay de deck too. Um, and that's what I did for my year ahead. I actually did all of them. So I kind of had like a goddess energy to work with for the year, an animal energy to work with for the year, um, and then like a card of the year from the Marielle deck. And holy smokes, yeah, same thing. This, the, like, I don't know if it's Mary L is just so magical to me. And so <laughs> anything that really works with it is like even more magical by proxy or what, but, um, they just were so powerful together all year. This was my Mary L stalker card all year. It was the nine of swords, um, which has a very different, again, that's what, an example of one that has a very different feeling to me, um, to the RWS nine of swords. Um, even though I can see some, like a, a string, like a connection, but it's still very, very different in her deck. So anyway, these um, all were very important, kind of used together, very important decks for me all year long. So again, Earthbound, Oracle. And even though I'd kind of discovered this combo this year, just for me personally, like this deck's been around forever and that, this one's been around for a long time too. Um, the combo surprised me and I just found it this year. And even when I found it, I was like, okay, yeah, I found it. I like the way they work together, but I'm probably still not going to use it that much. I used it all the time, just like inexplicably found myself coming back to it over and over and over again. So this is a Love Scare Bayo mini deck, mass market. This, <laughs> look at this thing. This is like a really old beat up, Oracle deck. It's one of my first Oracle decks that I kind of quit using for a little while. Um, I did mod it. I made it, I edged it, and then I cut off. It had really thick white borders. And right when I cut off the white borders, I was like, oh, I already want to use this more often. Sorry, I'm just going to turn it upside down because it's going to annoy me. Or right side up. Um, so even when I found out how well they read together yeah and that like they kind of made sense to me um visually i kept coming back i would use them for inner child reading let me see if i can fix the glare sorry it's probably too dark sorry for the wiggle every time i'm like i want to make at least one video where i don't have to edit it i end up just having more catastrophes than <laughs> ever before to where it's like oh i'm gonna definitely have to edit this um okay so yeah used the heck out of them all year long and i'll just be pulled to it like when i just need really good information these work this this combo is just working really really well for me i don't often use the little white book um for the nicoletta chicoli it's just one of those little scare um books it's just not very good this uh colette baron reed's guidebook however is awesome and i use it all the time um but again i've had it for so long i also know it pretty well and like i have my soccer cards <laughs> that come from here for sure i don't know why same thing it's like the second i go to do a video like i almost never use reversals and then everything pops up as reversals i don't know what's up with that so yeah beautiful um kind of weird combo this is not my aesthetic this is cool it's not typically my aesthetic but like i get it and i like the artwork anyway um and this would totally be a deck that like i dislike the aesthetic so much for like the cheese factor that like in normal world i wouldn't even want to use it and it, again something just keeps pulling me back and it's like it is 
a very good reader. I have no, I've had very little, if not no, kind of pull toward her Oracle decks since this one. This is the only one I have of Colette Baron Reads. Um, but yeah, it just, it's a strong reader. And maybe because it was one of my first is why I just keep coming back. Trimming it also helped me want to use it more. I think it made the artwork somehow less cheesy with a big chunky white border on it. I'm not sure. And borders don't always bother me, but this one definitely works better without. So yeah, uh, just a just a favorite, a total weird surprise. I don't know where it came from favorite that I used the heck out of uh, all year. So yeah, Hanged Man, A Change in the Wind, and then the Four of Cups. <sighs> It's just so good. Like both of these cards are like these kind of different feelings of a change in the wind, you know, just kind of like you're waiting, you feel like you can't wait anymore, you're bored, you're unhappy, you're, you know, <laughs> like in limbo. And, you know, you keep getting the red light, keep getting the red light. But then, like, to get this reading and, and be in these places, and then to get this oracle of like, being on the edge of a change it's so they just worked so beautifully together i can't say enough good things but i'm going to stop saying good things because i'm trying not to make this crazy long oh geez um all right so nicoletta chicoli tarot or yes tarot and the wisdom of the oracle divination cards by colette baron Reed. both mass market oh my phone's about to die i knew this would happen too see this is like my filming curse. I don't know why. All right, I'm going to pause so I can get a battery. Okay, battery is in, but now I have to use a different mic. Or no, I'm not using any mic. I'm just going to record on my phone. Hopefully the sound comes through okay. I apologize for the change. Okay, so um, my other, let's see. Ooh, no, so I'm going to speed up a little bit because I'm um, going too long. So I'm going to try and speed up. My other big surprise this year was like my Marseille love. Um, it started with this guy, which I mean, everyone has talked about this this year. That's a great Marseille deck. Um, super cute. Great guidebook. Totally agree. I used the heck out of it and really um, started to understand and appreciate the Marseille system so much because of it. This was like... Um, and as much as I love the like precious artwork and I, you know, like no complaints, I think it's totally valid and as beautiful as Marseille deck, it made me want a traditional Marseille deck as well. Um, and so after doing a ton of research, um, mostly thanks to John Aki Academy Tarot, um, watching videos and kind of seeing what was out there, I settled on this um, Marseille deck, the Spanish tarot. And... I love it. I've already said in another video, Fournier is by far my favorite shuffle of all tarot decks all across the world, um, which is wonderful because it's mass market, so that works great. Uh, but this deck is amazing. I love the vibrant colors. Um, I apologize, my lighting kind of sucks, so you're not getting probably the full beauty of them. But... Um, I did a practice, I kind of got off my daily habit with it, but I would pull um, a Marseille card and just kind of, I think my poll was like a three card poll, what's the hardest part of my day, what's the best part of my day, and like what kind of attitude or focus do I need to have to make the most of either situation. And so I did that three card poll and I would record it in the morning. Um, I honestly wouldn't like hold it in my head throughout the day. I would kind of try to forget it a little bit, but then at the end of the day, I would write the best part of my day, the same three questions. Um, sorry. I'm like, which way does it go that way? <laughs> I would write the same three questions blind without looking at what my cards were. And then I would go back to my cards and kind of see, um, what the divination was at the beginning of the day and something about that kind of blind effort um, a it made me um, just be like whoa these cards are great like they're great for divination and B uh, was just like an exercise in me kind of correlating um, 
the cards to everyday situations and learning the pips a lot better. So Marseille, it was just like a surprise Marseille year. I actually thought I had planned on it being a Lenormand study year. I got like a the specific Lenormand deck that I don't really like the cards or the artwork, but um, had read that the book was really good. And so I got that like fully planning on a Lenormand study year and Marseille happened instead. And so that's fine, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, that was a totally great accident. Okay, I'm getting down to my final three couplings. Um, so I didn't have, I just had my old like blue and white check back um, original RWS, which I got way late in the game. My first tarot deck was actually the Mother Peace Tarot, which I used for a very long time before I learned the RWS system. Um, and for the longest time, I was like, I don't need another RWS deck, this like old cheapo mass market um, deck is great. And sure enough, <laughs> all of a sudden I was like, I do want a different RWS and, and saw this one on, um, I think Honey Lou at, uh, at, oh my gosh, is Honey Lou her channel name? I'll link her below too, but um, she loves the Albano weight deck uh, and she was showing it and I just fell in love. I kind of wanted, yeah, I love like the moon baby deck and there's a number of decks that are kind of expensive that um, I was dreaming of, but at the end of the day, I don't want, my indie budget is limited and I don't see myself getting an indie RWS or a more expensive RWS, like, I'm sure I will prove myself a liar <laughs> before long. Um, but anyway, I love, I love this deck. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a great something else to have, even though I'll always love my plaid backed RWS, even though the colors are terrible. Um, this is, I don't even think I said anything about it. Sorry. Witch's Oracle by Sally Morningstar. This is one of my oldest faves. Um, I've been Again, this is like a been around longer Oracle deck. Um, and I've been having a really hard time pairing her with anything. And I, I still, this isn't like the perfect pairing, but a similar colorway um, in a lot of the cards. And I did a number of readings with these. I actually have some um, clipped up on my board above my desk here. And they read really well together. So it was just an Oracle deck I love, 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 but sometimes wish I had a, a tarot to go along with it. So I was just using these. Um, I think I got these around summertime and used them for some of the bigger sabots. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I don't know, this is up there on one of my favorite Oracle decks. I believe it's been around for a while. And it's just a very witchy deck, but very down to earth. Um, I say that as this like horned wizard pops up <laughs> with a baby lion next to him, but like it's very down to earth and very practical and just like, yeah, uh, a excellent reader, like really profound messaging comes through the deck for me. So that is like maybe a weird combo that I used quite, used for like important parts of my year this year. And the combo of the cards depending on the reading um season or holiday I did them for would stay um up on my altar for really long periods of time so it just has a very strong connotation for this year for me um and I'm gonna do I can't find any of the bags for these all the time this is what happens when the mountain of decks happens it's just like chaos trying to manage it while still talking. Uh, sorry, I know my mic is bad, so I'm going to try to only talk when I'm up here. Um, and then my other big, like, decks this year, and this was my second, I think, behind Colette Baron reed my second oracle ever. Um, this is the Archetypes deck by Kim Kranz. I love her work. Uh, the Honestly, my least favorite is um, her tarot. <laughs> I like her oracle decks much more, but I also feel like, and I've seen other tarot readers say this, that like, I'm going to have my moment with that deck and I'm going to be crazy about it. So it's not that I don't like it. It's just that it hasn't clicked for me and like 
I just have like a really, um, ooh, sorry, profound connection with her Oracle decks. And so, um, this archetype deck, I feel like will be my, it's again, one of those I feel like will be on my top 10 forever. Um, and I hope, like, I honestly hope that that stays true. <laughs> Uh, the guidebook's amazing. The cards. I remember when I first saw these cards, I was, like, actually kind of disappointed because I was having my, like, artistic tarot excitement stuff. And I was like, oh, I, these collages are kind of weird. Um, but after using it and forming a connection, like, I love them, even though they're kind of funny collages. This is her uh, alchemy deck, which I, again, this is another thing that I thought was going to be my big study this year was alchemy. And it didn't happen. Um, I'm gonna re I'm going to recommit to that this year hopefully and I never like freak out too bad if my plans don't work out um I am one of those like make too many plans and it's not really realistic kind of people so no big deal if I have to say no to it but uh anyway so I got this this year kind of mid-year probably and thought I would use it like crazy and I did I haven't used this one very much but um I really like it and I'm excited to work with it I just went back to archetypes for some reason so and yeah my other I had I have other related alchemy studies that I was going to use with this that I didn't get into so those are still on the docket for sure this was much more an astrology year which the alchemy deck does have a lot of astrology in it which is cool um, but yeah, my focus was just other places, still learning and still lots of tarot learning. So I don't at all feel bad about how it worked out. So my, but my real like hair, oh my God, I'm also having one of those days, even just getting the decks out for this. Um, every single deck is like falling all over the floor. That just happened with <laughs> me opening, opening my tarot that I paired with this. So this pocket animal spirit. This guidebook, I'm pretty sure, is like, no, I know for a fact. It has all the information the big guidebook has, which I think is true with all of her pocket decks that she has. I think this pocket deck just came out this year. I had read with this Oracle deck from um, a friend who let me play with her cards when we were hanging out. So I knew I liked it. I knew it was really good. Um, I know a lot of people talk about struggling with animal decks. And I actually, I really liked, I think it was John Aki did a video about why animal decks um are challenging for her and it really I never understood anyone that was like I don't use animal decks I don't like them that was the first time I was like I get it that's a really good point she had really good points in what she said um and so yeah that's kind of been on my mind ever since of like not disrespecting our animal friends by like thinking we know the important messages they have to teach us I do look at the natural world as like a really important teacher in my life. Um, but I want to, as with anything that I'm looking to as a teacher, I want to be respectful. So more things for me to chew on this year, but I do nonetheless, the readings from this deck for me have been really, really profound and beautiful. This was a total surprise favorite tarot deck of this year, this turning terrestrial tides tarot. I put this in another video whose name I can't remember um but it is just like this grungy <laughs> uh like um oh my gosh like some photography mostly black and white has this really cool like bright green edging um but yeah super grungy but it has like I don't even know how to describe it. Sometimes it's just words. Sometimes it's like a saying, like ashes to ashes, dust to dust on the death card. Little like poem type things here and there. So it's a combo of a lot of different things. But I I just told you kind of how I feel about Kim, Kim Cran's Wild Unknown. It's just something I don't love reading with at the moment. But I love her um, Oracle deck. So I was like, I really want a tarot deck that I can read with her oracle <laughs> when I need it and this totally fit the bill I use this by itself I this actually goes with so many things which is another reason I love it um but it goes really well with the Kim Kranz deck which is can be sometimes a challenging style of deck to pair with 
I think the animal cards less so, but her archetype deck can be challenging. So this works great with her decks, which is awesome, given how much I love her oracles. And yeah, this is by, um, I didn't say, 8th House. I got it off Etsy. Um, it is uh, indie, but I want to say, I might be lying, but um, I want to say this deck wasn't crazy expensive. It's more poker size, which I also had like a really big either mini or poker size deck thing this year. Um, but there's something about this tarot deck that just, I love it. It's like, it just has a kind of gritty, simple, real, but also really practical vibe to it, which probably isn't like an awesome description but yeah it just um and these worked beautifully together the quick caveat i'm gonna give right now is at the very end of the year these decks pulled in as like very important for me at the end of the year sorry i have fountain pen ink all over me voyager tarot so um some of you may know and probably purchased the ritual tarot was on mega sale right at the end of the year and um i've always said the ritual tarot is just not something that's my um, jam, you know, not that I don't think it's beautiful. I do think it's beautiful. Um, but the price tag and like, yeah, I just didn't feel so, so different that I felt like I needed it. And that's still true. But because it was on sale <laughs> and because I love the Garden Goddess or um, Rose, oh my God, Garden Goddess Tarot's um, videos. I love her videos. I love her style. I love like her choices she talked about ritual tarot and because i love what she said about how she used her cards this year i was like okay i have to get it it's on sale i have to get it i love you know i love the way she used it for her year cards um and i went deep like i almost bought it and thank god i watched um mixtress rays did a comparison of this i think she did the uh, oh my gosh, it's not the Jubal Dance. <laughs> What's it called? Something Dance. And she compared this one, that one, Jumble Dance. Oh my gosh, sorry. Um, Ritual and Telesma, which Telesma is another one. I think it's beautiful, but I don't think I'd ever buy it. Um, and thanks to her video, I was like, what am I doing? I do not need Ritual Tarot. I don't need another super expensive tarot. I'm trying to do a low buy year this year and just really go deep with the decks I have. And after watching her video, I came back to Voyager, which is, this is a mass market deck, FYI. I did mod mine, so it had green edges on the side. I, I trimmed those because they're pretty chunky cards as is. Um, and I got sat down with this deck and did a reading and <laughs> cried. I freaking cried. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did. You know, like I just need to work with this deck more. Um, and there's so much to it. And I just got really excited to use it again. So I did a bunch of readings in December with this deck. I did my year ahead, my month by month reading with this deck for 2024, which was awesome. It was so good. Um, and I had talked before about how I've used the Abaton keys with this deck, and it's a really similar style. Um, sorry, I wasn't going to take it off. I'll just show a few cards real quick. Um, it's that kind of older looking collage style with the Abaton keys, and it does read really well with Voyager, and I like this Oracle deck a lot just on to work with other decks too. Um, but what I got this year and hadn't used until I kind of had my fall back in love with the Voyager <laughs> tarot moment is the Sustain Yourself Oracle, which is by the same creator. Um, and this is a huge oracle. I can't remember how many, look how many cards, like I can't remember. I want to say it's like 80 or 90 something cards in here. And it has a huge uh, guidebook that goes with it all about sustainability, which is beautiful this day and age actually sorry these are so big I'm just gonna do two um but yeah a really awesome oracle deck with a really wonderful kind of message behind it so um yeah these are more about like just like I mean it's all archetypes you know but this is much more kind of sustainability of our energy and of the planet um 
and this clearly is just more about like the specific archetypes of the tarot but my year ahead reading for 2024 was just super awesome i loved putting these together and falling back in love with voyager was a super fun experience and then to add this again another mass market oracle deck that is just huge and has so much information and it's way deeper like i remember when i first took it out of the box i was just kind of like yeah i don't know um but there's so much going on in these cards i really i love both of them and so that was just i'll just say this in closing is like such a beautiful practice for me remembering what my intention is with tarot for this year remembering that i have so many decks that i need and want to explore and create relationships with and i already have the tools at my fingertips and while there's so much gorgeous art out there and i don't think you know i do look at collecting tarot as collecting art so like i don't i have, live in a tiny house and i don't have wall space for a bunch of art collection i don't have like storage space really for a bunch of decks either but i make it work um so this really is me collecting art from people and so even though i feel like i have everything i need in the tarot and oracle realm um, I still will collect it for art and for joy, <laughs> but I went pretty crazy the last couple years after only having one deck for like 16 years straight. Um, and I really, it's not about like good or bad or materialism, even though that can certainly play or budget, which is certainly a factor. But this year I just, there's so many amazing tools and I want to go deeper with them. And so just that whole experience with Ritual and thankfully finding the Stress Rays video, which I'll also link below in case you... Again, she wasn't even talking so much about like not buying things, which I know that is a part, something that she does talk about a lot. Um, but that video is just so helpful to like look at the artwork and remember like I don't need four decks in a similar art style. Like... I can be happy with one of them and go a lot deeper with it and yeah maybe like years from now it'll be fun to switch them out but i don't know this it helped me fall in love with something i already have rather than fall in love with and buy something new that i didn't really need so anyway that is like a big plan and commitment that i'm trying to make for this year to work with what all these amazing decks that i have and really be super, super intentional and thoughtful and slow about anything else I might bring in. Like just this morning, I watched a video and I almost bought a really expensive indie deck. And I was like, nope, I'm going to have to, you know, this is going to be a year long process of really work, working on this. And it is hard. There's so many decks out there now and so many amazing creators and so many cool pieces of artwork. But um, I don't want to overwhelm myself with so many things and not really use and appreciate the many things I have already. So yeah, this was a late end of the year um, slide into most important decks and that is bleeding over into the new year. So that is my um, most important decks of 2023. I am hopping on here really quick to add a few decks into my most used decks of 2023. I totally forgot like my practice decks, like the things that I use as like a regular tarot practice throughout the year. So all everything up till this point that I've mentioned has just kind of been like, I have a question, I did a reading, I did a day ahead kind of situation, that sort of thing for the decks. My like regular practice decks that I used a ton in 2023 and I totally forgot because they're just kind of habitual at this point. This is the Tabula Mundi. Um, it is a very expensive um, indie deck. A really great alternative to this one is the Hermetic Tarot. This is mass market. I also used this and I also used this as another indie deck, 8th House Tarot, um, which is from the same place as the Terrestrial Tarot that I mentioned earlier. So I've used all three of these decks in my deck and walk this year, which I mentioned in another video has kind of been like, um, you know, on and off practice throughout the year. I didn't perfectly keep up with it, but I did my best. So these are decking cards. This was an extra that I got 
um, that I use on my altar as I do my deck and walk. Um, we are currently, as of today, January 10th, I believe, um, in the Deccan, the third Deccan of Capricorn, which is the Four of Discs. So, um, I mean, I can use this for readings, but I just, I use it more for an altar practice. So this is the Devil card for this Deccan and the Sun card for this Deccan. So this whole deck is just like, a whole trip. It's a whole thing. <laughs> um, I got the, it comes with a little white book. That's actually really great, especially for a deck and walk. Um, but it also comes with a chunkier book that I use with it. This one is heavily Thoth inspired. Um, I do sometimes bring my Thoth deck into my other two decks that I use with my deck and walk. Um, but this one, yeah, just is very, has a lot of heavy kind of Thoth influence. So that usually works for me. Um, and these decking cards just have the three uh, tarot cards that are associated with the decking, kind of the imagery is all mixed in into one card. And it shows you like the three Deccan rulers of each um, astrological sign. So the sun, Venus, the sun for the first Deccan, Venus for the second Decan of Virgo and Mercury for the third Decan of Virgo. So yeah, um, I don't know. It's just a great deck. I love it. It's um, really quirky and weird, like not necessarily like my aesthetic per se, um, heavily based on the tree of life. Um, but anyway, it's just a really important deck to me and without going too deeply into it. Oh, I have to show these like crazy, amazing backs or at this holographic element to them. So yeah, very special deck to me. Used it all year. Um, missing a few decans here and here and there for sure. Um, my most expensive deck of all my decks. Um, this one I mentioned in another video. Um, I have a really intense Pluto transit going on right now. Um, clearly, as I'm saying all this, not all people who, you know, study and love astro uh, love tarot study astrology, but there is a lot of heavy overlap. And um, I am doing a deep dive study in astrology. I'm kind of wrapping up my, what would I say, maybe my master's level course on astrology right now, since it's not like really codified. Um, but I have a really intense Pluto transit going on right now. And um, it's been kind of wrecking my, wrecking, it's not wrecking my life, but, but rocking, deeply rocking my self and my life. And this was a deck to just really work with that Pluto energy. Um, so Mysteries of the Black Madonna, um, I was able to put it on a payment plan, <laughs> not through the creator, but through, was it PayPal maybe? Um, so I got like a zero interest pay plan. So that's how I gifted this to myself, but just to work with this underworld energy that I've been dealing with. And um, shadow work is a very big part of my life. Um, and not surprisingly with Pluto transiting this big part of my chart, it is coming to the fore. So this was, um, not as heavy of a practice as I anticipated this year. Um, but, uh, something that I definitely did regularly throughout the year. And I hope to make a more regular practice with it in 2024. Um, this is another big part of my astrology practice. Same thing. I made a video about this one too. This is the moon deck. Oh gosh, I'm saying that wrong. Mm, it is by Carolyn Smith and ja uh, John Ostrop um, for this video. But this is a heavy moon deck. It's also influenced um, kind of, it's got like a Deccan ish element to it with these, but it, it doesn't align with the Deccans by any means. Um, it's, I think, I think I looked this up in the other video and I've already forgot. It's like a Vedic um, correlation that these mansions come from. Um, but it's got these air moon, fire moon, earth moon, water moon cards based on the um, phase of the moon is in. And so I use these as a three part um, kind of 
every other day. I wish I was that good about it, but it's, I usually kind of update them when, um, honestly, I'm like going through a feminine cycle related to the moon or um, just feeling a connection to the moon and I need to tap into where it is. So I'll pull the mansion for the moon based on where the moon is in the zodiac, which the moon changes um, signs every one and a half to two days. So the moon is the fastest moving body in the zodiac. Um, so again, that's why I wish I was that good with this, but I'm not quite. So I pull up the mansion based on where the moon is. I pull up the um, whether, you know, whatever sign it's in, if it's an air sign or earth sign or whatever. And then I correlate the phase of the moon. And then this has a goddess. Where are the goddesses? Um, oh, funny. I must have the goddesses. Oh, no, they're not pulled out. I don't know what I was doing with this. It's in a funny order. But um, it also has a goddess that's correlated to it. So if the moon is in Taurus, I'll pull up Venus. If it's in um, Cancer, I'll pull up Hera. Uh, and I'll put those three cards that correlate to the moon on my altar and read about them, which generally helps me understand <laughs> something about what's going on in my life either my body, my emotions. It's very like a very personal practice that um, has helped me really tap into the moon. And I highly recommend that if you're not into astrology, particularly if you're a woman, I'm sure it works well for men too. Um, I really recommend tapping into the moon energy, even if it's just here or there. The moonology decks are good for that. I've never had a moonology deck. Um, I have her book though. Uh, what's her book called? It should be right here. <laughs> not moon power that's a different one. Oh darn it oh yasmin boland it's called oh it's just called moonology the book so the book just by itself is great if you've never been drawn to her decks um the book is amazing but yeah um tapping into the moon was the start of my astrology journal it's also journal journey it's also been the start of like a lot of just really powerful personal practice for me that's transformed over the years and helped in my healing and a lot of other things quite a bit. This is the Embolk Oracle. Um, I have all of these currently available. I really like these decks. Um, what's available? The Samhain, the Yule, this is the Embolk, and then there's Beltane and um, uh, Mabin. Um, there is another one coming out. I can't remember what the next one coming out. They've kind of been coming releasing these out of order, um, which is totally fine. Uh, but I can't remember what the next one that's on pre-order right now is. These are all mass market. And then this is um, tarot, uh, <laughs> Carlotitas or Carlotides. I'm pretty sure it's Carlotitas. Um, it is a Fournier deck, which is like one of my favorite cardstock shuffling decks um, with these beautiful backs. So I have, it's probably, <laughs> it's very much like a spring summer deck. So it is not gonna look awesome with the Imbolc deck, which is the newest deck in the Seasons of the Witch series. Um, but this works really well with the Beltane uh, deck and it even works well with the Maven deck. Um, they don't have a lot of the like <laughs> summer, spring Sabbaths out yet. It's mostly the winter uh, or fall decks. But anyway, I have used this deck with the Seasons of the Witch um, and I love them together, especially, obviously, I think it goes best of all with the Beltane deck, which I love a lot. But this deck, um, I, I used it a lot more at the beginning of the year, and I kind of forgot about that. Um, because it does have that kind of springish summer vibe to me, I haven't been using it as much in the second half of 2023. But it goes really beautifully with the Seasons of the Witch decks. Um, which I use by themselves just as an oracle all the time, and they work quite well. So I still have the Yule one out currently. I'm kind of using the Imbolc and Yule together at the moment. We're kind of in that in that in between season. Um, but a very new addition to my deck collection is the Solara Culta Melioria. I just had my birthday, so this was a birthday present, a very special birthday present. And this one. Um, is beautiful with these decks as well. So this version has um, the kind of Oracle deck in the back of it. There's been so many walkthroughs of these lately because um, I think her Kickstarter just came out. I got one of her extra decks that she kind of mentioned uh, she'd have some extra going on sale and I put the date in my phone and 
that was a birthday present. So the beautiful thing about this deck is um, I feel like it goes really well with the um, fall and winter seasons of the witch. So I haven't had this until recently, but it will kind of be another deck that I use with these um, seasons of the witch, winter, more wintry, fallish decks. And honestly, I mean, I would use this in the summer too. I don't have a problem with that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.